Hi guys and girls on YouTube and welcome to my channel. In this video we're going to be having a look at a 14 inch colour TV. Now this is a TV that was hugely popular in the 1980s. I seem to remember they were about £199 brand new and they were really really good seller. They had excellent reliability but uh, the chassis had one or two common faults and one or two quirky little things. So it's covered up under here. Let's move the camera over and see what we've got. And there you go. It is of course the Thorn Ferguson TX90 chassis TV. Uh, now this has still got the original sticker on there that says made in the UK. And this is actually a particularly good example. And I'll tell you why it's so good. Because not only has it got the tuning door... We've also got the little orange tuner um, which tunes in the stations and it locks in there and when you shut the door it operates the AFC switch. So that's quite an important part of the TV and it's good that we've got that. Um, as you can see, number 8's marked for VHS, um, Ferguson TX. So um, I've had a look, I've found the um, service manuals that I used to use in the 1980s. Uh, let's take a quick look at them and then we'll get the back off the TV and I'll show you one of the most common faults there was. Right, so that's the service manual I used to use in the 1980s. As you see, it's got some uh, handwritten notes on the front. Um, now, one of the things about the chassis is it was fully mains isolated. Um, it was fed from a, a little transformer. And as you can see, the tuner, the aerial socket, pops straight out of the back without any mains isolation. Um, now, if we turn over here, um, this seems to date it from uh, 1984. Um, it's such a long time ago, I can't remember. I thought it was a bit later than that, but it's saying on there, 1984... Um, I've also got, apart from the service manual, um, that's the one I think we've got there, the 37140 uh, non-remote control. Um, I've also got the proper um, Thorn circuit description. Uh, and if we take a look, um, a couple of the things that are quirky. Um, what Thorn did to obviously cut costs, um, instead of using say um, a one or two watt resistor for the um, collector of the video output transistor um, they put three in parallel to um, cut down the dissipation and also save using a bigger resistor uh, now this happened in quite a lot of different circuits in here um, as you can see that's in the video output stage um, if we move over here so you can see here, same in the frame output, we've got four resistors in series. If we turn over to the power supply, um, we've also got um, another four resistors in there. And I think um, there's um, four resistors parallel there. I think it was all done um, just to save on production costs because uh, obviously the small resistors would be um, a lot cheaper than using a larger one. Um, if you look at the sound output stage there, how incredibly simple the actual sound output stage is. Just a handful of parts fed from an IC. Um, so let's move through some of this other literature. That's the diagram. Uh, all the important rails are marked in different colours, making it really easy uh, to uh, trace any, anything on here. So the most common fault on here uh, was frame collapse and intermittent frame collapse. And that was usually caused by these pair of, um, that's the Darlington one, and uh, that's just an MPN. Um, always got dry joints on these two transistors, um, probably because they were mounted on a heat sink that got hot and there was a lot of um, thermal moving about. But that's the diagram. You've got all uh, waveforms marked on the back, important um, key rails there for ease of fault finding. Now back in the day I repaired an awful lot of these sets because they were just so popular. Um, in fact if you look there, um, my name even, appear even appeared in um, Ferguson Feedback. 
um, a tip on a fault on one of these so let's just turn over there and look at some of these handwritten notes I've got in the back um, I've never been very good at spelling so I'm sure you'll see lots of mistakes so look at all this lot here from my old shop pages of handwritten notes um, just so um, I wasn't chasing the same fault twice uh, in fact if we look at some of these things um, that's my old shop um, if we move over to there that's when I was VAT registered that's a long time ago that's when I used to make real money and um, that's one of my old leaflets that's when I used to sell the uh, brand new Samsung TVs right so enough of that let's get the back off this telly and uh, let's have a good look inside right so that's the back of the telly it's a little bit dusty in there it does need a good clean um, AXM 37-001 that's the thorn tube um, that's the little mains isolation transformer there um, in the 20 inch set they actually had a lot bigger transformer uh, fitted and I think they used to blow fuses in the uh, bigger sex. I still got a transformer in stock somewhere um, Now we can't see a lot there. So I think the best thing to do is just I think there's just one single screw under there where them controls are and we'll whip that out and light it down You can see it better And then uh, we'll get this switched on I'll show you where the dry joints are on the frame first uh, We might just have to attend to them before we turn it on but let's get the chassis out and have a look first Right, so that's your chassis out of the case, uh, a two chip decoder, um, now I don't know if you can see down there but this is where the, can you see resistors all of the same value, they'll all be in parallel, uh, this is the frame output stage, them are the two transistors um, that used to get dry jointed and they used to cause the majority of the frame faults, um, let's move around this side here. That's the notoriously unreliable on and off switch. Uh, degaussing positors, they used to go and blow the fuse. Um, and apart from that, pretty reliable sets. Um, these used to become noisy, um, but there is a way where you can, you flick something here, I can't remember. But you flick something here and the front comes off and then you can pull these out individually. Um, and just keep clean the contacts inside and then reassemble them all and then you don't actually need a new one um, so what we're going to do now is just pull off the tube base I'll show you the resistors on there um, you can see the video output resistors all paralleled up there so we'll pull that off now you can see all them 47k resistors they're in, in banks of three in parallel so there should be nine there um, right so let's just put the tube base back on and we'll stand the chassis up and just check for dry joints before we turn it on right well what you actually can't see i don't think you'll be able to see it with a camera um let's have a look here there are actually some dry joints on the first two pins of that transistor um but this doesn't actually look like it's been had any resoldering in its life um so the chances are this will be a set that's not had a lot of use um because they didn't last long before these got dry jointed because they mounted on that big heat sink so i'll just uh, attend to the dry joints on here and then we'll put the chassis back in and let's turn it on but it doesn't appear to have, a, have had a lot of use at all this in fact I can't actually see anything that's been done to it there doesn't appear to be any new soldering at all right so the dry joints are done um, I thought I'll give it a quick hoover as well and it actually looks just like brand new now I really don't think this has had a lot of use uh, but I guess we'll find out when we when we turn it on, when we view the picture. And um, in case the younger viewers are wondering what that is, um, that's a little magnet that's been glued on at the factory. And that will have been to 
um, cure any purity errors that they couldn't get right by twisting the scan coils. Um, so these really were made to perfection, these tubes. They weren't just thrown together and the attitude, oh, that'll do, like uh, some manufacturers, some cheaper manufacturers. These were really well made. So let's get that in now and uh, let's get an aerial, let's get a skybox connected to it and see it running. Right, we're just tuning in now. Tell you what, let's just stop the camera while we tune this in. Oh, and look at that, what a bright, sharp picture that is. I think we just need to kind of like forward plan ahead right now because we understand that the pressures are going to be there in about a few months' time. And if we don't get it right now, we, we will be in, 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 in a very difficult position in winter. Yes, yeah, so we've got good grayscale, lots and lots of colour, volume controls a little bit crackly. Having um, worked in the urgent care what a telly in, um, that is uh, as well, we're already seeing a record number of people attending. Yeah, I definitely want to take it out and uh, cleaning up that. So, brightness, trying, just understanding that contrast, coming ahead and the potential of an increased number of people. Absolutely perfect. It's, the concern is, are we going to be able to cope? Okay, uh, Dr. Tamber. Now when these sets were brand new, spares were very, very easy to come by. Um, I've got some here, some leftover new old stock. Um, as you can see, they came in a nice fancy box. Um, these are ICs. They're always very well protected with them um, stuck into the foil. And of course, everything you need is circuit diagrams, service manuals, uh, this for all the different models. All these things were all very very easy obtainable um, now when this tx90 came to the end of the production life um, there were companies like sense components um, in the back of television magazine and they were selling off um, brand new boards they used to buy a lot of manufactured surplus and for this particular set you could actually buy a brand new complete a full complete chassis in a box um, for absolutely next to nothing and I used to buy them up and um, take the parts off them because they were all brand new so uh, let's just take a look at one of them I've just got one left now so there it is that's the only remaining one I've got there's quite a few bits missing off it uh, Ferguson TX90 that was a complete chassis brand new um, as you can see I've taken the tuner off I've taken one of the ICs uh, I've taken the line transformer off but that is, uh, that's all brand new, that's probably repaired three or four sets already that. Alright guys and girls on YouTube, many thanks for watching my channel. Um, I realise I've got a lot of subscribers that like these trip down memory lane videos. Um, there have been an awful lot of people who look at this set and they'll say, uh, oh I had one of them when I was young. Or um, I'm sure there'll be thousands of people who look at this and think, yeah I used to repair them back in the day. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Alright guys and girls, many thanks, goodbye.